now let's move to this second example over here and this is a much more complicated example because this is a recursive procedure call so I'm trying to compute the factorial of a number n and so I do this recursively the first thing I do once I enter the procedure is I check to see if my input argument is less than 1 if it is less than 1 then it's time to return a value 1 if it is not less than 1 then I need to recursively call this factorial function again right so I call factorial n minus 1 once I get the result of that back, apply that by n and then I return it back again. Now let's see how this is handled. So procedure factorial starts with this label over here and the first thing I need to do is check to see if my input argument n is less than 1. Okay now it would be great if I had an instruction called branch on less than where I'm comparing my input argument n which is in my input argument register a0 and I'd like to compare that against 1 and if it is less than 1 then I need to jump to a certain location okay now unfortunately MIPS does not provide such an instruction what MIPS provides you are two instructions which make up a branch on less than condition there is a set on less than instruction which compares two registers or you know maybe a register and, and an image at value and then sets a register if indeed the first one is less than the second one and then you can inspect the value in that register and either do a branch on equal to or, or a branch on not equal to and examine the result of that register and then jump wherever you need to jump okay so to make the programmer's task easy most simulators you know most assemblers will allow you to use an instruction like this because this is intuitive to the programmer and this is referred to as a pseudo instruction because it doesn't really exist in the MIPS architecture it's something that the assembler is allowing you to use the assembler is like a compiler so when it sees an instruction like that it translates that, that instruction into two instructions which are actual MIPS instructions so these are you know actual or real MIPS instructions okay so in this case I'm not showing you any pseudo instructions I'm just using the real instructions so I start by doing a set on less than I compare a0 which is my input argument that has the value n I compare it to 1 and if it is less than then I set t0 to be 1. Now here I'm checking to see if t0 is equal to 1 or not. If it is equal to 0 then it means I'm going to jump to l1 over here right so this piece of code is executed if n is greater than or equal to 1 and this piece of code is executed uh, if, if n is less than 1. Okay so if n less than 1 then I need to return the value 1 that is very easily done all I have to do is place 1 into v0 which is the return register and then hand control back to to my caller and I do that by adding 0 and 1 and placing it into v0 and then jumping to the return address now let's look at the more non-trivial case which is this this L statement over here so what I need to do is I need to first invoke factorial n minus 1 okay so to invoke factorial n minus 1 I need to provide the right argument so I have to populate a0 with the correct value so my own argument was the value n I need to decrement it by 1 and then place that value into a0 and then I invoke the procedure fact again alright there were three instructions here which I've ignored so far there are three instructions over here that I've ignored so far now what did I have to do before I invoked that new procedure I had to save the registers that I care about okay when I come back I still need a0 right because I, when I come back I'm going to use my own input argument the value of n right and so I still care about the value in a0 so before I invoke the new procedure before I update a0 to be you know a to be n minus 1 I'm going to save the old value of n onto the stack similarly I have to save my return address onto the stack and those are the only two things I need to save before I invoke the new procedure so I, so I have to essentially grow my stack by 8 bytes save those two values then I update n to be n minus 1 then I invoke the new procedure once the procedure returns back I have to repopulate the values from the stack so I so I update a0 to be n again I retrieve the correct value of my return address I increment the stack that means I basically am shrinking it back to its original size now I can multiply the return value which is in v0 multiply that by n which is now in a0 put the result into v0 because that's the value I want to return back to my caller and once that is done 
I return control back to my color. So it's, it's, it is not as difficult as you might have first imagined. And, and you can see that even though I use temporary register T0, that's something that does not have to be saved onto the stack and, and retrieved back from the stack. Now let's uh, move on to the third example. But before I do that, since that third example involves the use of characters, this is a good time to introduce how characters are handled. Right? So until now, almost every single example that we were discussing was dealing with integers. And integers are these four byte entities. Right? So I was always doing you know, load word and store word, and I was adding up these integer values and so on. But characters are much smaller. Right? So in C, every single character is represented with an ASCII format which attributes 8 bits or 1 byte for every single character. Okay, and there's, there's a table in the textbook that shows you the ASCII format for every single character. Now, if I'm retrieving one of these characters from memory and placing it into the register, that is allowed. I am allowed to get a single byte at a time, or I'm allowed to get you know, two bytes at a time, which is referred to as, as a half word, or I can bring in an entire word at a time. Right, so similarly, you have LB, just as you had load word, you now have load byte. You also have load half word over here, and correspondingly, you have store byte and store half word. All right, so now that you've been introduced to these, um, these ASCII characters, let's look at this next example. Uh, I should also mention that if you look at a string, it's nothing but an array of characters, and the end of a string is denoted by a special null character, and that has an ASCII value of zero. So now let's let's actually look at this example. So this this example again on page 108 of your textbook is copying a string into a different string. So it's copying a string that is currently residing in y into x. Okay, so x and y are these arrays of characters. So procedure string copy is going to initialize a variable i to be zero, and then it's going to take the contents of yi and move it into xi and it's going to keep repeating this right so it's in a while loop where you keep incrementing i and it's going to keep doing this until you finally realize that what you just copied is nothing but the null character that means you've reached the end of the string and at that point you exit the while loop and you return from your procedure okay so let's see what what is uh, being done so this is of course the saving of values on the stack and there will be a subsequent restore of values back from the stack. So we'll get to that later, right? Let's see what variables I'm actually using. That then dictates what needs to be saved on stack and what needs to be restored. Okay, so the first thing I do is I need to initialize i. I've, I've chosen to use register s0 to initialize i. Okay, and I initialize it to 0 by just adding 0 to 0 and then writing the result into s s0. Okay, now I'm going to enter my while loop. The start of my while loop has a label l1. That way, when it's time to loop back, I can do jump to L1. Now, what I need to do is first compute the address of yi. Okay, so the address of the start of x and the start of y has been provided as arguments, right? So a0 is essentially a pointer to the start of x, that is, it is a pointer to x0. And the second argument, a1, is a pointer to the start of y. So if I'm accessing yi, what I need to do is take the address of y0 and add y to it, right? So address of y0, since every element is only one byte long, I just have to add i to it to get the address of yi. All right, so to get the address of yi, I take whatever is in a1, that is, so this corresponds to $a1, and I have to add i to it, which is an s0. And similarly, to get the address of xi, I have to do $a0 plus $s0. Right? So that's what you see over here, where I add a0 to s0, put that into t3. Similarly, a1 plus s0 gets placed into t1. So t1 is the address of, so t1 is the address of yi and t2 oh sorry and t3 is the address of is the address of xi so i do a load byte from t1 and put it into t2 
and then the value that I have just got which is placed in T2 is then stored away into Xi. Okay, so I'm essentially doing a load into T2 and then doing a store from T2 into a different address which is the address of Xi and this moves the contents of Yi into Xi. Now I need to check to see if I reach the end of this while loop, right? So I examine the value that is sitting in this temporary register T2. If that is equal to zero, then I've just fetched the null character. So it's time to exit. So in that case, I jump to L2, which is over here. If it is not equal to zero, then I need to stay in the while loop. I increment I by one, and then I jump again to the top of the loop over here. Okay, but if it's time to exit, I go down over here. It's um, it's time to kind of restore stuff from the stack. I'll mention that in a second, and then I and then I return control back to my caller. Okay, so let's see what needs to be saved and restored from the stack. So essentially, in this case, I used S0, right? S0 is a valuable register that maybe my caller still cares about, right? So before I start, I'm going to save S0 onto the stack, and then when I return. I'm going to restore the value of S0 back from the stack. So I accordingly, you know, decrement my stack pointer by four and increment it by four over here. Okay, so I don't care to save temporary registers in this case, right? I'm using a bunch of temporary registers over here, but my caller should have been careful not to place anything important in those temporary registers, right? That allows me to freely use them without having to save them onto the stack and then restoring them back from stack. But I do have to save and restore the more important S registers. All right, so we've seen enough examples, right? So now I think we have some guidelines on which registers I need to save and restore. Okay, so let's look at what are referred to as caller saved registers. So before I, as a caller, invoke a new procedure, what should I be saving away onto the stack? Okay, I need to save my return address because it's just about to get overwritten. I need to save my own input arguments A0 to A3 because I'm about to put something new in these, in these input arguments. And in general, I should not be putting anything too important in, in T0 through T9. But in case I do have something important sitting there, I should assume that the callee is going to override those values. So if I do care about any of those values, I should be saving those into the stack and then restoring them when I, when I get back, right? So the onus falls on the caller to save anything that might be important that is sitting in temporary registers. Okay, now the callee, if it uses, say, S2, then it has to assume that S2 is something that the caller cares about, and so it has to save those values into the stack and then back. Okay, so why did I not put the onus of this on the caller itself, right? Even the caller could have done that, but the caller does not know which registers the callee needs. So the caller, by default, would have been overly conservative and would have saved all of its S registers and then put them back into stack, right? So this, this responsibility is usually left with the callee because the callee knows exactly which S registers it is using, and so it can take care of saving those onto the stack and then restoring them back.